Hi, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my Stampin' Up! Studio. I'm going to show you a project today from our holiday mini catalog. It's kind of called the July to December. That's the official name. But due to COVID, it's not starting. You can't order from it till August. Um, and it's always been called the holiday catalog, so I still keep calling it that. At some point, I may go over to July to December. That's just a lot of words. And then um, I wanted to remind you that celebration will also start on August 3rd. There's a ton of um, free stuff in here that you can earn with purchase. Super fabulous stuff. I'm not using any of it on today's card, but these two catalogs I will be mailing out towards the end of this week, probably over the weekend is when they'll actually get to the post office. So if you don't have a demonstrator in the U.S. sending you one, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. Um, if you're my customer and you've ordered $50 in products since January of this year, then one's automatically coming to you. A lot of you are getting them with your... Um, thank you gifts or you're getting them with your retreat. I have all these different little pa stacks of um, things going out, but everybody who's ordered will. So today I'm going to use this sweet little stocking set. It is sweet. It's so super cute. It is a whole suite. It has some paper. It has the stamps, the dies, some ribbon, some embellishments. I don't remember which ones. Um, and it's really kind of a Christmassy set. It's super cute. You can see these stockings. So you can go two ways with it. You can do lots of Christmas and not even include an animal. If you're not an animal person, you can pick your favorite animal. Um, or you can just, you know, leave them off altogether. The dies, the ones I'm not using today, you can see they're really big in this. It has this great banner. It's always great to have a banner. It has the fun star, this little holly and the berry and the bow. So some really cute little things in here, but it's not Christmas yet. And I'm not doing a Christmas in July for this card. Come back tomorrow or Friday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film the card right after this. So in the next couple of days, I will have a Christmas card with my favorite Christmas paper. And that um, video will show you what my Try It classes are like. So I'm going to pretend it's a Try It class video. I'll show you some past Try It Club uh, class PDFs. Um, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. And I'm going to use the Whimsy paper, which is to die for. It's so beautiful. So here's this one. But I'm not going to make a Christmas card. I am going to use um, our new cork paper. Look how much fun this is. So the one side is, it's a very thin kind of, it's paper, but this is cork. So there's cork on the front and then I'm just gonna use vanilla. So the first thing I'm gonna do is stamp and I'm just gonna stamp the little heads and just for um, making it go quicker. If I know I'm gonna die cut stuff, I will often just put them on one block together. So I have, I'm more than halfway through filming my um, summer retreat. Uh, so I've got a lot of stuff on my table, but we're getting there and the projects are super cute. I can't wait for those of you that are doing the retreat to see them. So I'm gonna put these on here. This is just a scrap piece of paper that I knew that was the right size because we are gonna punch these out or cut die cut them out. So there's our cute little heads. Um, and for some reason, you know, I don't do size great. Like I can't see it in my head till I see it in person. But these are a lot larger than I thought they were gonna be. And then, because I'm not doing a Christmas card, but I wanted to use a sentiment out of it, I went with sending lots of love. So, I mean, this could just be an, an anytime card, a birthday card. Um, I mean, you could do a get well, the sending lots of love. We'll do lots of occasions. And then on the inside, just pick a sentiment that's not what part of the set and then finish off what you want. So for this, I'm going to just trim out the words because there is no die that fit on the card. There's a, the banner. And after I saw the banner, I didn't really know the banner was in there, but I already had an idea in my head. So I'm gonna cut that out for now. And then we are going to color these. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to color them for you before I cut them out because um, it's easier for me to hold on to this big piece of paper. If you have issues with your dies jumping and they're not, sometimes you miss, then I would recommend you cut them out first and then color because that way you're not wasting your time doing um, coloring and then having to color it again. But it's so much easier for me to hold on to this if it's large. So I'm gonna go with my gerbil first, our hamster. I don't know what he is. Um, my friend Tanya would just call him a rodent. She's not real big into the rodent family and Stampin' Up! tends to have a lot of rodent stamps. So we always tease her about it. So this is dark and light smoky slate. So I've added some dark and then I'll just blend this in. 
I'm not going to on any of the animals. I'm not going to color the whole thing. I'm going to leave just a little bits of vanilla in there. Of course, they don't want to color over his little eyes. They are so cute. They just make you want to smile when you are stamping them. And of course, we all have animal lovers in our lives. Uh, you know me, I have helpers who often help in my videos. In fact, Sibby hopped up on the table. If she had stayed for this video, I would have let her. But she really wanted me to pet her, and so she just left when I wasn't paying attention. So I'm just doing a little bit of the blending, which that's what blends are for. So adding a little bit of dark, a little bit of light, and then also leaving it some of it so it's a little bit more shaded. I hope I got my kitty's whiskers all on. It looks like they are. And then I'm gonna do, I really wanted it, I wanted the kitten to look like my cats, but they're white and gray. Um, so they lost. <laughs> and I'm gonna do kind of a tabby colored cat. So I have my dark and light Cajun. Oops, I'm gonna start with your dark. And just kind of color around these edges again. We're using about the same coloring technique on all of these. Just a little bit different. So there's the dark. And here's the light. So blend this in. Now blends can bleed a little bit. But on these it's not such a big issue because we're going to cut them out. So if it bleeds a little bit then it, a lot of it will come out on the die cut. But I do like to color just inside the lines you see there. So if it bleeds, it will just go to the line and not outside of it. So there's that. Now I'm gonna add to get, a, that's a little rusty, but I didn't want her to be pumpkin pie. It's a girl cat. <laughs> so I'm gonna add just a little bit of dark pumpkin pie and mix it in, because you know our blends blend. You can blend any of the colors, they don't have to be matching. And that just kind of lightens it up a tad bit. So she's not rust, but she's also not pumpkin pie. It's a nice little mix of the colors. And just get a little bit more. And the nice thing is if you're new to um, using blends, these are perfect because of course you can, if it's splotchy on the animal, it doesn't matter because the animals have splotches. So there she is, super cute. Now let's go for our puppy. And for him, again, I didn't want it to be one flat color. So I went with cinnamon cider and then I am going to add some highlights with the soft, the soft suede. So let's do dark. And he's gonna have more vanilla left on him than the other ones do. So first I'm just gonna kinda add some of this to be some color. And I want the dark to be darker on some spots. So you can see there, now here's the same color, but every time you layer a new color on, it gets a little bit darker. So I can go back and add a, ton, a tad bit more of that if it's still a little light. So now I'm gonna kinda go up to the edges a little bit more because you don't want any lines. And just add those and then let's get our soft suede and this is the light suede and usually when I would do a blend like I wouldn't want any like I wouldn't want these deviations of color I would want it to be blended but because it's our puppy you know they can be spotty that's the name spot for so many dogs They're fun to color and every one of them can look a little bit different. So there's our puppy. And then I'm gonna just take the um, dark balmy blue and just take my bullet tip. And I don't wanna color the whites of their eyes all the way, but to get it to show up, you do have to go just a tad into the little white part. It's probably hard for you to see. I'll put some close-up pictures on my website because you can see that they have a little blue to their eyes. And then I'm going to take my dark petal pink and just inside the little ears here. The dog doesn't have his ears popped up. And then I'm gonna give my gerbil just a little bit of cheeks. So that's all of that. So now let's cut these out. So I'm going to use, for my cork piece, 
This is the picture, this die, and it is in the annual catalog and it is fabulous. I've used it so many times already and you're going to see it again in a couple of days because um, I like to do, I don't like to throw away good paper and this makes some great paper. I can see my whimsy stuff on here for my next card. So I'm going to put this on here. Just kind of, it doesn't have, I mean straight, but it's all kind of subjective as long as it's in your four by, this is a four by five and a quarter piece of paper then it works. So I got that. Let's pop that down there and then let's take these and do their little faces. Now this is where if you've already colored, you want to make sure everything's lined up. Otherwise you will be coloring it again. So I'm going to show you a tip because I know lots of you do this. So for one, if it was just me doing it, I would put them all, lay them all on here because you can see when I laid that on there, it made that one move a tad bit. So sometimes I put them all on and then I line them all up. So now they are. So now you don't want to put your thing in and slide it and move it because that often moves your things, giving you some tips so your things don't always have white around them. So then when you put it down, like put it down straight, hold on tight, especially to this one. Because if you don't, then you know sometimes your plates bounce and that's when they move a fraction. Because I know sometimes people are like, I can't get them straight. I know I'm lining them up straight, but after they go through my machine, now that it's grabbed that, I can let go. But you can see that's lifting up. Let me show you. Lifting up just a little bit there. So if I hadn't been holding on to it, it would have squished just a fraction, but it's that fraction and often um, makes everybody feel a little disappointed in their die cutting skills. And see, now you can see they're all perfect. So we've got those. Now our card's almost done. It's a fun card. And the great thing about a stamp set like this is it's good for all ages. So let's take our vanilla piece, fold this in half. This will be our card back. And then I'm gonna use this. I'm so excited about this. This is also in the holiday catalog. It is black gingham ri ribbon. And I mean, you can use some black gingham ribbon on anything, right? So I'm just gonna tie a bow, which is easy to do with nice flat ribbon like this. It's wide, but it's not too wide. So I want it to be tight, but then I need lines, uh, ends on it. So I'm gonna pull that. And I don't want the ribbon to be so big that it overshadows my cute animals. So keep pulling it till you get just a little ribbon and then pull it tight again. So we've got that almost enough to wrap around the side of my card. I don't want to waste the ribbon because um, when we pre-order, we can't get a lot of stuff to start quantities of stuff. So I've got that. Make sure it's about card width. Of course, the little cork piece is a little bit shorter. And here's where the other card is going to come into play because you can see as I pop these out, I'm left with these fun pieces. So for sure, for sure, for sure, these will show up on another card. In fact, for sure, for sure, for sure, these might be in a try it on a try it class card. It's a nice way for me to get a lot of you some cork paper because it's not one of the papers. I We have do 10 cards designed around 10 new papers in the catalog. Um, so this is a new paper, but it's not like a set of paper. That's how I do them. So I'm going to take this. I did find that it's a little tricky to um, tape on top of this with the seal because it can rip it. So just put a tiny bit there and then make sure you don't pull up on it so it pulls the paper. Add my bow. And then take this and I'm going to add all of my adhesive. So it's just ready to go when I have that on there. Because the paper, it's not flimsy, but it's definitely a lightweight paper. I don't want to mess with it after my bow's on. So put this up, just hold on to that right there, fold that over. And then the same over here, just hold it straight. And then add that on. Now you can just add it to your card. You want to be careful. And just put this right back on your card. And I've cut it four and the cards are four and a quarter. So you know you have about an eighth of inch gap on each side. Now I, you can see I've left this corner up. Well, I did and then I was trying to let you see it. So now I can pull this off because it's a seal. And so the seal 
doesn't stick right away. And now I'm going to fold that over and press it on. Perfect. Now let's take our little words and I am just going to cut them. Not, don't worry about being straight. Don't worry about getting your paper trimmer. Just go old school and use your scissors because we are allowed to do stuff that isn't super fancy. And if you cut right up against it, then it might not be perfectly straight, but it's pretty good. So I'm going to cut these apart. your words back in to the small ones. You can't tell if that has some on it or not. They're pretty tiny, but I wanted them to fit in my circles, so thought this was the cutest way to add the words and still take advantage of the circles. Now you're just going to take dimensionals. Start with our kitty. This is why you color with blends on scrap paper because if you're putting very much color at all, it does bleed through. So you just want them to look like they're peeking out the windows. And this is the biggest circle, so I'm going to put the biggest animal on it, which is the dog. I kind of thought about putting the gerbil in a tiny one, but I didn't. The gerbil is adorable, hamster. Somebody can tell me what it is. My daughter did have um, a hamster once because um, one of her friends' dads got it for her, even though I didn't want her to have it for her birthday. So how can you say no to a kid then? So then I was left with this white space, which I thought when I first made the card was gonna be okay. I didn't like it. But we have these cute stars, that's what they're called, cute stars in, in the upcoming catalog as well. So I took the black ones you could really use any of the colors. Um, if you have somebody that you know you're giving it to and they like color, a certain color, you could go, there's um, purple and orange. Well, I think it's freesia and papaya. So I've got two big ones. Let's put two little ones down here. See what I mean? Um, we can't buy very many of these for now. And I'm going to use all mine up before we ever get close to being able to order some more. Because these are some cute stars. So, simple. So cute, super fun. Here's the one I've already made. So if you need a catalog, let me know. Make sure you join my um, email list and then you can find out about the Try It class because you don't want to miss it. It's a great class. And again, come back for the video um, that posts tomorrow or Friday, depending on when I get it up. Um, that will show you all about a Try It class. Everybody have a great day.